Brendan Performance. Welcome to our one of our last videos at least. <laughs> We're going to go over the installation of um, your vacuum block and doing all your vacuum line routing. All right. So you're going to get a box just like this, flat. Inside you're going to have your billet aluminum vacuum block. This thing is nice. Got more ports than you possibly need, uh, and you can orange it how you want to, right? So the way we're gonna do it, the best place we found is it could go right here, right? If you use it right in, in front of here, then you can guarantee that it hooks up properly, and we can all route everything here and back. But before we have to do that, we have to actually set it up. So go inside here. You'll we'll see a couple of bags. You know, one of them is going to have some vacuum T fittings and stuff like that, and some caps for it. We'll look at this in a second. First one is this one. You have this big, huge cap here. So let's go ahead and open the bag. It's got this big cap. There's a little rubber O ring on it. That's what we're going to use. Since we're going to be putting this right here, we're going to put this side in here. Because you have the rubber o-ring, you don't really need to Teflon it. Um, you can if you want to, but the rubber o-ring can do the sealing job for you. All right, so we'll get it semi-tight. We'll go ahead and tighten that down in a second. The other one, on the other side, we need the feed, right, which is what's going to bring in from the intake manifold, right? So coming from here, we're going to tee off and come into this. This, make sure I clean up the threads a little bit. I think I got a little piece of something on it just now. All right, and then come in here, and this one also has a rubber o ring. So we'll come in there and tighten this down pretty good. Okay, we'll go ahead and tighten those in a second. All, all we're going to need right here, since it's coming in from here, we need one going back. This is back to our uh, blow off valve. That's uh, not blow off valve. Sorry, boost gauge inside the cabin. Uh, so that needs to come on one of these ports. We have to have one go to the uh, wastegate and one to our blow off valve. Right. So this is this is a perfect location here to meet everything. The blow off valve is going to be right here, uh, and the wastegate is obviously straight down. So we only really need three ports. And then the other three can be blocked off. If you have other things that you need vacuum for, you could use them in the future since there's, there's enough fittings in here to actually make, you know, enough uh, holes there to use all six. But we're going to go ahead for this case and we're going to go ahead and, and block off these three. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll show you this. Now we go to the second bag. Second bag has the, as a metal vacuum tee that's actually going to go right here which is what we're going to use to then tee off and come into here on our feed and then it has these little i'll show you here these little things which are actually your caps i'm going to put those in the in the first three here and we're going to put the other uh feeds in these three and obviously we're going to teflon these so let's go ahead and do that and we'll come right back to you after we've teflon them and put them in place all right, here is the vacuum block. As you can see here, we put the three caps in here. We put the three uh, nipples here for the boost reference coming from here for uh, vacuum. All right, so now we need to get this vacuum block secured. You can put it in a whole bunch of different places. Um, we found that right here on the pillar is probably the best. Strut tower. Strut tower. I don't know what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, that's not a pillar. <laughs> I'm about to fall asleep anyway, so you're not the only one. <laughs> anyway, um, so they are. We provide you with these self-tapping screws. Um, they take an eight millimeter uh, socket. So what you're probably gonna have to do is a three eighths to a quarter to an eight, right? Um, so that's kind of real nice, simple. What we're gonna do, and you can see these fit right through. Give you just enough thread to catch into uh, strut tower. So let's go ahead and 
get this mopped up. Let's see the location here. Seems to be like right about here ish. Right there seems to be the right spot for it. Definitely need extra hands for this. Straight view, pretty level, pretty good. All right. All right. Try it one more time up here. Let's get a complete flush. There we go. Not going anywhere. Perfect. That's great for your vacuum. All right, next up we've got to get is the lines. This is the easy part, right? So what we're going to do, you want to take off your stop hoses that were going between these two here. This is where you're going to get your uh, reference from, okay, coming from the intake manifold. This is good because what you're going to want to do here for your blow-off valve, your blow-off valve needs to get something from the intake manifold so that when the pressure changes, left your throttle plate closes, it'll tell the blow-off valve to actuate and open up. Right, so that's really what you want to get done. So this is why this is the perfect area. It's also perfect because uh, so the blow off valve will go. It'll tell you tell you the accurate boost of what you're actually hitting into the engine, and it also give you an accurate measurement there for controlling your boost down at the wastegate. Right, so very simple. Um, so let me go ahead and grab the line, and we'll be right back. All right, we went ahead and got our vacuum line. So this is nice. You actually get 10 feet of the larger uh, and you get to, uh, get 20 feet of this one here. So you're going to have more than enough vacuum line, probably for two kits, but uh, <laughs> you want to make sure you guys didn't run out. Okay, so what you're going to do is take some of your larger line and go ahead and measure it for the length between uh, this right here and your intake manifold. Kind of measure it out like that. We already did the measurements, so we know what we needed. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and um, now we're going to go ahead and put it on in place. So we kind of already have this stuff done. So give me a second to get this one off. You want to keep the clamp because it actually works really well. And you want to just go ahead and put one side on. So we'll kind of trim this to length because it's going to be it's going to be too long. Guaranteed. So put one side on, put your clamp back over it, and then we're going to go ahead and use some pliers. I guess this can do in a pinch. There you go, it's on, that's one side. So normally this one will be obviously bolted down, but that's okay for right now. Okay, next up, we've got this. We already took it out of the packaging. This is metal, so it's nice, it won't break on you. We used plastic in the past. We had broken ones every six months or so. Pretty annoying. So that's why we went ahead and got the metal one here for the kit. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this right around the, just before the halfway part. And when we cut that, then we'll be able to put this in its place. So right before halfway, cut that. Then you kind of come in here. And thank you, sir. It's going to be a little bit of work. I have to work it back and forth, whoops, to get it go in. Ah, fun times. Don't worry if you mess up a few times. It's not 
incredibly easy, but you'll get the hang of it. All right. Once you've got it like that, you're pretty good. You don't have to jab it all the way in there. That's good. More than enough for what you need. Right? Now, so you don't have too, too much room to work with right there. So you might want to back it out just a little bit so you've got a little bit more flex. The more you've got these things in, the less uh, elasticity you got. All right, now let's go ahead and remove this off of this one. Perfect. Keep the clamp. Let's go ahead and do the same thing, except we're going to go the opposite say, way. We're going to go we'll put it on here first because this is the harder one to get on. There we go. Back and forth. Let's keep working on it there. All right, got it up. Perfect. All right. Now this up, we can go ahead and let's see. We need it to be right about. There. So, cut this back. And boom. Okay. Now we cut it back. We can go ahead and put this clamp back on. Slide that up. And put this piece onto that. There we go. Then we can obviously use some good pliers <laughs> for the sake of time we're just using this right now. I recommend this at home kids. <laughs> All right. So we'll do with a pinch. Yeah it will. It'll work fine. As it did. Okay. There you go. That's really it there. You can play with it a little bit there. I would extend this a little bit here. Uh, let me see if I can hard with the tighter. Perfect. It's a little bit less mm -hmm. of an issue. Perfect. Now I'll just take this back and go there. Boom. Then we just hit these with zip ties, mm -hmm. and you'll have a nice tight seal. Good. So, what you want to do, turn this and twist it down just a little bit. You don't want it too high. Now, we take our other uh, piece here, and we're going to connect this to here. Right? Real simple. Let's go ahead and go ahead and clean up this edge a little bit. Go. Go ahead and put this on. More fun times on this one. I'm sure the vacuum block is going to be just as fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So this thing's just slightly undersized, which is actually kind of where you want it anyway. Right. If you if you get too, you know, large on the vacuum lines, it just makes it hard to get a good seal. Get a nice vacuum leak, which everybody needs. All right. There's a good length there. Give it a little bit of slack right about there. Boom. Cut it back. And now let's try and see if I can work this on. Boom. Actually, it was actually quite easy. <laughs> we'll see if you can get it. Again, slide it back and forth, back and forth. Twist, twist, twist. All right. Boom. Got it. Not taut. So you got a little bit of play there. Good to go. It's good enough for you to be able to. Uh, tighten everything down and you are in business. Okay, perfect. Good. Now, 
Next pieces, we'll go ahead and do the smaller lines. Uh, one of these will go to your, uh, again, your block valve, which is not currently on the car, but I'll show you here. It's real simple. Just put that on. This one's, these ones are easier. Boom, block valve, that's one. We have the line here coming here to our boost gauge. Obviously, cut it down to the lengths that you actually want. Uh, you can, again, you can play with this. You can do them in different orders. It doesn't matter. You do what, what works for you, right? Um, this is your car, so do what you would like. And then you have one that goes to the waste gate. Now, for those guys who are doing um, a, a boost control setup, you know, we tell everybody to run six pounds. All you have to do to run six pounds is run this to the waste gate. If you remember, when we did the waste gate down under, we had the um, fitting was on the bottom hand side, the bottom side of the waste gate, right? So that's the one you go to. All right, real simple. You literally just connect this line down to the waste gate. Can't it be any more easier uh, than that? But uh, any more easy? Sorry, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're getting there. We're struggling. Uh -huh. uh, in this case, um, we actually have I actually have a boost controller. This is a manual boost controller. This is the one I recommend if you want to go manual. It's the Grim Speed uh, manual boost controller. It is excellent um, in that it is extremely precise. There are 16 clicks per turn, uh, and each click corresponds to roughly about a quarter of a PSI. You get four PSI basically for every turn, full turn you do. So again, don't come on and put this on here and start turning it. Listen and feel for those clicks if you're going to be using this. Um, real simple. The boost reference comes in the bottom. Boost exit comes down from the front here and down to your wastegate. So it just interrupts the vacuum from here to your wastegate. But very simple, from here to the bottom, bottom uh, from the front here to the wastegate. That's it, done. Um, so I think right now you guys have got a good feel uh, for how to hook up your vacuum lines. Real simple, again, like we said, it's, it's, uh, you don't have to, it's not really hard. The hardest part is getting the vacuum block set up ready for you, but you run that T to the vacuum block, then you run again one to the front here to your boost, uh, your block valve, one here from, uh, from inside the cabin from the gauges that we installed before for your boost gauge, run one, and then you run one either directly to your wastegate or interrupted in the process of going to the wastegate by a boost controller of some sort. The electronic boost controllers function very similarly. Uh, you would just do the similar type of thing. Just it's a, it's a little bit different. You have to follow their instructions. But manual boost controllers all work basically the same way. Interrupt from the vacuum block down to the wastegate. Simple. All right, and that is the vacuum lines.